here we have finished that section and we have now this very strange looking um, piece of fabric. Um, we have a join over on this side and then we have two uh, flappy bits here. One is your front and one is your back. And so what we're now going to do is we are going to chain 11 and join to the other side. And so once you've done that chain 11, we're going to slip stitch into that very first stitch here. And then we're going to break our yarn and pull it through because what we'll need to do now is turn the whole thing to the wrong side because what we've done there is joined up the two basically so that we can now start working in long, long rows across um, and do that other second straight section. So if you want to turn your work over to the wrong side facing and we'll need to find the very first stitch of the row here of the wrong side facing. And so what we'll be able to do now is work along the whole of the garment, including these 11 stitches here that we've just made for the neckline, and then all the way along the other side as well. So now this should be all nice and familiar for us. We're going to join to this very first stitch, but we're going to be doing a half double crochet in the third loop of this stitch. So join to begin in that way. And we're going to chain one, and then we'll begin with that half double crochet in that first stitch. Don't worry about the loose ends at the moment and the fact that your stitches are probably a bit wibbly wobbly. That's absolutely fine at the moment, don't worry. And then we are going to be doing a single crochet in the next stitch. And then a half double crochet in the third loop. And then a single crochet in the next stitch. And we just repeat those two all the way along. So, oh, if I can manage, a half double crochet there in that third, and then a single crochet in the next. Repeat all the way along, and when you get to the um, chain 11 that you've created, obviously just work them, uh, the stitches, don't worry about loops or anything because there aren't any to worry about. Just work them straight into those um, chains um, until you get to the end of your row, which will now be the same stitch count um, as when you very first began your garment. Okay, so now we've finished that first row of this new section. You'll, you'll know that it's exactly the same as the stitches we've been doing. You've just then filled in this set of 11 stitches in the middle here to join the two halves of it together again. And so the next row that we need to do, do you will know already, it's going to start with a chain one, and then we're going to work an extended half double crochet into the back loop of this first stitch, just as we've done before on the other repeats of this row. And then we're going to do an extended half double crochet into the full part of the next stitch. And then an extended half double crochet into the back loop only of this next one. So remember, pop it on its end if you're struggling to find that back loop. And then an extended half double crochet into the full stitch of the next one. And then we repeat those two stitches all the way along. And then those two rows that we've just then worked, um, as has been the set pattern for the rest of um, the top actually, we're going to repeat that set pattern uh, for the number of rows that it tells us in the pattern. So you'll have to pop to your size in the pattern, find out how many rows that you need to repeat of these two. And then once you've done that, pop back and we will work the second sleeve shaping together. And then we'll be ready to pop the border on and do the neckline. Okay, so once we've completed section five, that's the bit we've just done here, the second straight area, you'll see that you have now got a rectangle um, in the middle of your top and that's going to be the neckline. So hopefully it's starting to make, make a bit more sense as to how it's constructed. And what we're now going to do is basically mirror what we did at the very beginning, so some um, armhole shaping over on this other side. So in the pattern, you'll see this is referred to as section six. So if you pop to section six in the pattern, have a look at what numbers you need to use for the size that you're making. Um, and then we'll do that bit together.
So for the size I'm making, the small, it's telling me that I need to chain one and then I'm going to work an extended half double crochet into that first stitch. And then a half, extended half double crochet, pardon me, in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat those two stitches, one in the back loop and then one in the full stitch for 64 stitches for the size that I'm making. But make sure you check because the size that you're doing, it, it does change depending on what size you're making uh, because that's going to accommodate for the armhole and for the length of your top as well. So go check in the pattern, see how many stitches you need to do for the size that you're making. And then when you get to that whatever stitch it tells you to do, I would pop a stitch marker in um, if you like using stitch markers, because that's going to tell you where you need to start the shaping for the armhole, just as we did at the beginning. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back ready to do that shaping. So there we have the 64 stitches for the size I'm making. And the next thing we need to do is do the armhole shaping. So you see we're coming up towards the neckline here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to slip stitch in the back loop only of the next 61 for this size. So bear in mind it will be different depending on which size you're doing. But we're going to slip stitch into that back loop only, just as we did with the first shaping, into 61 stitches. So there are our slip stitches and now what we need to do is carry on with the established pattern here and we're going to work an extended half double crochet in the back loop only and then an extended half double crochet in the full stitch and there are two stitches that we now need to repeat until the end of the row and the amount of stitches that you have left here should be the same amount of stitches that you did at the beginning of the row. So this size, there's 64. So um, it's always good to, to check <laughs> once, you, once you've finished because uh, if not, you may have gone wonky. Um, and I have definitely done that before and you then can't figure out where you have lost or added that stitch. So um, just make sure before you carry on with the next row that you've got the same amount of stitches um, as you began the row with. Okay, so that's our very last stitch and we are ready to turn our work and work row two of this section. So row two of section six is going to be really similar in that we'll work a portion of the, the pattern that we know. We will then work the armhole shaping and then we will work a portion of the pattern for the remaining um, end um, stitches of the row. So we begin by chaining one and a wrong side row we always work a half double crochet into the third loop only and then a single crochet into the next stitch. And then we repeat those two we're going to do a half double crochet into the third loop only, remembering that that third loop, if you turn your stitch on its end, because we're working in rows, we have got the back loop, the front loop, and then right in front of us here is this third loop. That's how we're classing it in this pattern. And then we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. And so work those until you now get to the armhole shaping. So if you popped a stitch marker in, um, then you'll just literally work up until your first stitch marker. Uh, if not, you just count on your stitches. For mine, I believe it's 64. So I'll work those and then I'll meet you at the armhole shaping. And there we are, we've arrived back at the armhole shaping here. And you can really see where it dents in anyway, so it's quite easy to find even if you haven't used stitch markers, if you're like me and like to live dangerously. Um, and so what we're doing now for the next 61 stitches for the size I'm making, we're going to pop a slip stitch in the back loop only. Now they are trickier to find once you've made these slip stitches because they like to duck right down, uh, but turn it on its end so you can see the front loop here and the back loop here. And so we're going to go for that back loop there and we're going to pop a slip stitch in there. Now work, work really carefully here to make sure that you don't pull your slip stitches too tight. Because if you do, we've got another two rows of the shaping to work. And if you pull them too tight, you just will struggle to get 
your hook in first of all and then also it will massively affect the tension and the size of your armhole so we want to be nice and generous with our yarn let it let it do what it wants to do um, and don't pull your stitches tightly at all so work your armhole stitches in the back loop only here up until it's very easy there you see to go through lots of stitches at the same time um, up until you get to the where it starts the pattern again and then we will carry on as we know and now here we are at the end of the armhole sleeve shaping. I should move that out of the way, sorry, so you can see better. We've finished the armhole shaping. And now we're going back, you see, we've got a half double crochet with the, the three loops for us to choose from there. We are going to now work a half double crochet in that third loop, and then a single crochet in the next stitch. And we repeat those two stitches all the way until the end of the row and that will be our row two complete. And then the next two rows are just going to be a repeat, sorry, of rows one and two that we have just worked. So you'll do a right-sided row with your extended half double crochets, and then you'll do a wrong-sided row with these um, half double crochet and single crochets. So go ahead and finish this row, and then work rows three and rows four as a repeat of rows one and two that we've just done. And then I'll meet you back here and we will put the border on together. Okay, so we've finished the armhole shaping and we're gonna break our yarn and pull through our last stitch because what we're ready to do now is work the border around the whole of our garment. And the way that we do that, we're going to turn it to the right side facing. As you can see, there's a lot more, <laughs> a lot more garment than I have space for now. And what we're going to be doing is working along the edge here. And now this is going to be working into the sides of the row. So we're going to do this shorter edge first. If you look on the pattern, there's a lovely diagram that will show you exactly where we're going to go. And then we're going to go along this long edge here, all the way around from the armhole shaping. It's going to then go up, look how big it is now, all the way along here. And then we're going to work into the edges of the rows on this bottom short edge. And then we'll go all the way along the long side again um, and join back where we begin. So you need to find this with the right side facing, the first stitch here of what's going to be the edges of your rows. So your shorter, um, shorter end as it were. And we're going to join the yarn to the first row that we have here. My aunt's taking this opportunity to fall on the floor in a great big tangle. <laughs> here we go. Okay. So we join the yarn to that the side of that first stitch and we're going to chain one. And now what we're going to do is work a single crochet in the side of every single row that we come across here. So we know that they work in sets of two if we're looking for um, the shape of the stitches to know where they go. And you'll know for whatever your size is, it does tell you in the pattern how many rows you did, so how many stitches we need to work along here. So that's going to go into the side of that first row there, a single crochet. And then we've got our next row there. And then our next one comes here. And it is tricky to see where the sides of the rows are sometimes, it's tricky to even get in there. Um, but the thing is, just be consistent and make sure you go through the same part um, of the stitch when you're doing these rows and then you won't get lost and muddled up. So just work slowly along. There's really no point in rushing this part of it because I, I don't know about you, but if I rush things like this, I get it wrong. So just take your time and go steady and just work all the way along this shorter row up, up to the edge. And then what we will do is turn the corner and we'll work along the long side. And the long side will be much easier because you're going to be working into the actual stitches. So this is the tricky bit to get us going with. Um, and then it's much easier once you're faced with actual stitches. And now here we are at the last stitch 
the last row rather of this part here. And now what we're going to do now we've got to the corner is rotate our work. And now we're going to work, as I said, along this long row here, and we're actually working into the stitches again that we've got. And we're going to, the, you're not going to do anything. We're going to make a nice little rounded corner here. So you're not going to add anything here to turn the corner. But then what we want to do is work into the back loop only of the stitches along the edge of this, whatever the stitches you want to work into the back loop only. So let's find that back loop there of that first stitch. And the second, and we just work our way along this very long edge <laughs> um, with um, a single crochet in the back loop only. And then when you get to the end of this row, you're going to then rotate and work along the other short edge. And you're going to similarly put a single crochet into the end of each row there. And so it will match your stitch count for um, the first short edge that we've just done. And then you'll rotate and you'll go along the second long edge and you'll do exactly the same as I'm doing here now. You're going to put a single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch there. And then when you get back to the very beginning, we are going to join this because we're working in rounds now. So you're going to join this as a round, but then we are going to turn. Um, so normally in rounds, you would keep with the right side facing you, but here we're actually going to turn. But um, don't worry about that just now. You crack on, go all the way around your garment and get back to the first stitch and join with a slip stitch. And then we will turn and work the next round together. Okay, so here we are on the last few stitches of this first round. Um, and we are coming up to the last one here and we are going to slip stitch into this first one so that will be the first stitch that we worked into the side of the rows so we slip stitch into that one and then what we're going to do is turn the whole thing over so that we have our wrong side facing us we do need a good space or a, I think your lap sat on a comfy chair to do this one because it's big now and then what we're going to do for round two is we're going to chain one just to give ourselves a bit of space to move. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a slip stitch into the back loop only of each stitch around. So turn it on its end again and we're going to look for that back loop and we're going to slip stitch. And it's going to be similar to how it was, let me try that again, similar to how it was in the armhole shaping in that you just need to give them space because if you don't give them space, it will all tighten up and it won't, first of all, look very nice um, and it will really affect the tension of your piece. And when you come to block it, it won't be as easy to block to size. So don't have any um, tension in your hands that's going to pull this too tight. Um, I have had a chat with my mum recently about this, actually, this technique where she was doing a border with slip stitches. Um, and I suggested that she also went up a hook size because she was really struggling with it. And that worked an absolute treat for her. So if you are struggling and you're, you know, struggling to get your hook in even, go up a hook size uh, from the row below. And it will be tricky to wriggle the hook in, but it will make your slip stitches much, much neater and um, just better for the round as a whole. So slip stitch in the back loop only of each around, and then you're going to um, slip stitch in your first stitch to join. And if you look how it looks on the other side, it gives you a really lovely effect here. Okay, so that's round two complete of the border. And what I've done already is I've turned over so that we now have the right side facing us, and I've chained one ready to start round three. So this is the last round of the border. And all we're going to do is a single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch around. So you just work your, work your way around. It should be much easier than the last round that we just did. And just do a single crochet in the back loops of each. And then when you get back to the beginning, you join with a slip stitch to the first stitch that you have there. And then you're ready to break your yarn and then we can work the collar together. Okay, so now we've finished the border, we're ready to pop the collar on. And you'll see you have your square or well, rectangle shape here, that's your cutout ready for your collar. And what we need to do is find the back shoulder 
corner. Now you can decide, it doesn't matter, they both are exactly the same, the front and the back at the moment. So, and the only reason for starting it here is because there will be a little seam to do up on uh, when you get back round. We're going to do a join as you go method, working all the way around this collar space here. So, um, so it's not, it, don't worry if you, if you join somewhere else, it's fine. Just wherever you join, know that there will be a little join and a seam there. So I'm going to join into this very first stitch here of this little side panel, which um, will be 11, should be 11 stitches. And what we're then going to do, I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to work a slip stitch into every stitch and every end of a row around. So there'll be 11 stitches along the side here that I'm doing. And then when we rotate, we're going to work across the stitches that we, the rows rather, that we had for the neckline. And you'll see that you need to put one in the end of each row that you have there. So let's get to the end of these 11. And then we come to an actual end of a row. So we're going to pop a slip stitch in there. And then we now have the ends of the rows here that we're going to pop slip stitches in, a bit like we did the border. So just work nice and evenly. And let's turn it around so you can actually see it, because I know I'm veering off the side of the camera there. There we go, that's better. So you're now going to do a slip stitch into the side of each of these rows here. And again, again, like the border, it's consistency that matters here, because uh, this is going to be the thing that you see it's going to jump out at you if it's not nice and neat. So make sure these slip stitches are nice and neat. So just work your way all the way around and then get back to the beginning and pop a slip stitch in that first stitch that you made to join together. Okay, so now we're back to where we started and we're joined with a slip stitch. And now we're gonna start working back and forth in rows and we're gonna use a join as you go method, which if you haven't tried before, is really easy um, and saves a lot of seaming. And so what we're going to do is going to chain 11. And this, this is the length of the collar that I've chosen to do, but if you would like yours longer or shorter, then just adjust the length of that chain. You can have it any length that you like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work into the back bumps and we're going to single crochet into the back bump of the second from the hook and then each along. So that will end up giving us 10 stitches for this collar that we're working. And I know it's really tricky to see at the moment now, sorry, there's not much for me to grip hold of. Um, and it's at a very wonky, strange angle, because I find when I do join as you go things, I do hold things at a really wonky angle, and I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but it, wor it works for me anyway. So if you are struggling to do things straight on, as it were, just change the angle of either yourself or your work and see if that helps. So there we are, that's a single crochet in that last one there. And then what we're going to do, we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches of this setup round. So we can see the one that we're using here. Um, it's always a good idea if, you cut, if you're not sure where you are, just tug on it and you'll see which stitch moves and that's the stitch you've just been in. So now we're going to slip stitch in the next two from the setup round. So one and two and then what we'll do is we'll turn and from now on we turn at the end of every row just as we did for the main body and now we're going to slip stitch in the back loop only of each of this row but what we need to be mindful of is that we're not going to count those two slip stitches that we've just done to join there as stitches we need our single crochets are the ones that we're going to work into so you need to pretend they're not there, those two slip stitches, and then we'll slip stitch into the back loop only of each of those 10 stitches of the collar. There we go. 
and then we're going to turn it and I would recommend rather than turning the whole thing turn just as I've done there just twist twist your hook so it goes underneath it and out of the way and then what we're going to do we are going to chain one and then we are going to single crochet into the front loop only of the 10 stitches of our collar so that's going to be this one here sorry my dog's very noisy today Now it's very easy to miss this last stitch, so make sure that you keep count. So that's 10. And then we're ready to give a little tug and see where it was that we last joined. It's that stitch there. And now we're going to work a slip stitch into the next two stitches of this setup round that we did around the neckline, which is easier said than done. There we go. One and two and then we just repeat the process we turn over and now we're going to miss those two slip stitches that we've just joined to the collar with and we have now 10 stitches here and we're going to do a slip stitch in the back loop only of all of those And then we turn and I do always tuck my yarn underneath so it gives you a much neater edge there at the top. So then we chain one and then you've got your single crochet into the front loop only. So we're going to carry on repeating these two rows all the way around um, until you get back to here. And this is where our seam is going to be because we're going to join the two together. So if you carry on repeating those two rows all the way around to the very beginning again, and then we'll get back together and we'll join them. Okay, so here we are ready to join up the collar. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch around there. And then into the next one, which will probably be, depending on how you space your stitches around, the, um, the first stitch of this row here that we did, the beginning row. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over, ready to work a wrong sided row of your collar. And then we're going to do um, into the back, back loop there of that one, and then into the back loop there of the other one. So basically we're just joining these two um, sets of 10 stitches together. So we're going to turn it from rows into a round. So it's really similar to if you were joining a brim for a hat or something like that. So just work your way along those 10 stitches with a slip stitch and that will join your collar. So then when you've joined those stitches, you can break your yarn, leaving a tail to weave in at the end. And that is your collar complete. So if I turn it around and show you that it does, Still need a good blocking, obviously we haven't blocked it at all yet, um, but now that you've got the shape of your entire garment there, we can give it a good block and you'll see it rises up um, at the corners so you can just make sure that that's nice and level when you, when you block it. And then, in terms of what to do next, you can, the pattern um, tells you that you can either leave the side seams open or you can seam them up to where your armhole is. Now, it depends how you want to wear your top really. If you want to wear it like a, a tabard kind of top, then leave them open. But if you want to um, wear it as like a tank top, um, then do seam them however you would like to, whether that's with a whip stitch or with a slip stitch seam. Um, and I would do that on the wrong side of your work um, and it will look much, much neater. So whichever version you want to do for seaming your sides, um, block it first though I would say and then seam your sides so block it flat and then seam your sides if you want to if not don't worry at all and just enjoy wearing it 
So I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a real pleasure to work through it with you. If you have any questions or any comments, or if you make one, then contact me and let me know because I would absolutely love to see it. Thanks so much for joining and see you again soon.